Welcome to part 28 of my building the Black Pearl. And as you can see, I'm getting very, very close to finishing this, uh, this project. I still have a little ways to go. I still have all the pirates and the characters to paint. There's also some scaffolding that can go here in the back of the ship. I'm undecided if I'm going to use that or not. But I, I think I'll go ahead and put it together because it is mobile. I mean, it's separate from the ship. There also is a, uh, a casket that is from one of the, the Pirates movies. It's not proportionate to size, so it, it's just an extra that you can put together if you're interested in having that for uh, keepsake, I guess. But uh, I've made a few decisions where I made some changes. I'm using, in one area, some larger size dead eyes that I purchased separately from the ship. And it just made it easier for me to work on it, and they show up better, and I, I like them, actually. And then there's another part where I've used some different ropes. So let me uh, give you a, a, an overview of the ship or a flyby so you can see what it looks like. Then those of you that are interested can stay tuned and go into a little bit more detail as how I put the, the ship together and the, the specifics how I got to this part. This is where you might notice that I've started using the larger dead eyes and you can see some of the larger ropes. I'll go into detail on that in the video itself. But uh, you can see I'm getting very close. Again, the statue, I will save that for the very last part that I put on. Although I'm sure as time goes by, I will add uh, more things to the ship, you know, I'll think of something to, to put on board or I'll tweak something a little bit, make it a little bit better. I was concerned where the lines come up to uh, form the ladders. Towards the top it gets so narrow it makes it difficult to tie those uh, ladder ropes. So I just took a uh, an old piece of lumber or timber that I had which would have been a plank or a piece off the ship, just a spare piece, not this ship, a different ship. And I just took this little saw and made little slits. And I did that for each ladder on the upper uh, part of the ship, and I'll probably do the lower ones too. Here they are in place right there, one on each side. And, well, you're not, you can't really tell, but it really does help keep these spaced but because there's other lines between the camera and what I'm showing you you can't you can't make it out very well you might be able to see a little better on this one and see it it just kind of keeps it nice and straight on both sides this one you can see the lines going down and you can see them over there also so that was pretty easy to make and I think it'll make it a little easier when I go to tie those in place I do have all the dead eyes in the areas of the crow's nests uh, all tied up and in place and I'm ready to start doing the rope ladders. I'll probably hold off on that and wait until I do the lower ones also. I really struggle with getting these perfectly straight. I see a lot of people that are able to get them perfectly straight but I'm, I just struggle with that. So I'm still working on techniques. These upper ones are harder than I think the lower ones will be. I think I'll succeed on the lower ones. I'm ready to move from these down to these. And get... I'm going to try and show and explain my decision on working the rope work on these dead eyes. And some time ago I discovered a product on Amazon. The manufacturer is Sergeant Knots, if you want to look that up. And this is tarred twine. They have various sizes. This happens to be number 15. And I decided to go with that over what came with the ship because in watching the movie recently, I noticed a lot of the rope work on the ship is really large. So that's what I've done. To attach it, I simply looped it around the mast. Did not tie it there. Just put a loop and had them crisscross. And then it goes down. You can see those going down through the crow's nest. And then they go down to the dead eyes. Here's one of the ropes. And what I do when I glue it, I 
I clamp it to these clamping scissors and that weights it down until it dries. So it has dried. I can tell my dead eye is going to be about here. Now remember I had made some of these to give me the positioning. So it was just too cumbersome. It's still maybe a, an okay idea, but as I got more experience, I'm just doing it by hand. So I can tell I have a lot of extra cord here. So I'm going to cut some of that off just to make it easier to work with. This is also a thread product that I purchased separate from what comes with the kit. I did a different color than black so you could see it a little bit better. And I do a square knot and leave a tag on both ends. And then I get an imaginary loop where that dead eye is going to go. And then I just feed that through that upcoming knot. Then I go ahead and tie it. I pull it about as tight as I can. And then I come back with a final square knot. Again, pull it as tight as I can get it. That gives me the loop, and you can see it's approximately where I want it. The other thing I've done, instead of going with the small dead eyes that I started out with that came with the ship, I really like these better. I had ordered these on my own. They're seven millimeters. And I'm using those instead. Get it in the loop, and then I just kind of maneuver that's like pretty much in the right spot. There's two ways I can do this. I can pull that knot down with my fingernails sometimes, or other times I just pull these two ropes apart and it slides that knot down. I'm just getting it closer to where I want it. Get it put in there. I'm gonna pull those apart again and get it snug. There it's snug. That's right where I want it. I take an alligator clip that I've kind of filed the teeth off of, and I'm going to hold that tag, and you can see the two strings, the knot, one goes one way natural, the other goes down. The one that goes the most upward, right to the top, have the alligator clip hold it, and I'm going to loop it down. I'm going to take that lower tag and wrap it around seven times. I kind of push it down as I go a little bit. Okay, on my seventh time, kind of just snugging it down with my fingernails. Now I can take the alligator clip off, and I'm going to take that tag that I was wrapping, I'm going to stick it through that loop, start pulling this string. I want to make sure it doesn't bunch too much, so I'm just slowly doing both at different uh, or in, in intervals so it snags down there. Now you can see what I have. I can pull that down tighter, snug it up to the bottom of the dead eye. Now I'm going to pull the bottom thread, hold these black ones firm, and I'm going to pull just till that pulls that line in to the top of that dead eye. It takes a little pressure. If you over pull, which I think I did that time, you'll get a little bulge, but I've decided to live with that. I'm going to line my dead eye up how I want it. So you can look and see. My two eyes are down below and the nose is pointing upward on this one. And now I'm going to separate those black lines. I'm going to put a dab of CA glue in there. And now just a little bit right there where that rope comes through. I'm going to kind of pull this straight down. Now I'm going to let that dry and then I'll cut all those tags off. Now I'm going to run the lines between these two dead eyes. Start out with the one that is coming down from the mast and you take the one on the outside right 
and you're going to go from the inside, ship side, on this string. I've already pre-tied a small knot in the back. I'll put just a drop of CA glue on the knot. There's a couple ways you can thread these because now you're going to go from the um, outside in. So you could stiffen this thread up with a little super glue and feed it through. Or I made this using a, a needle threader and I just bent it. And this is probably harder, but again, you're going to go to the right hand eyelet and takes a little trial and error. And you really have to look close because sometimes you think you have it in the right one, but in reality you don't. Tweezers come in handy. Threaded it through. Pull it out. Now we're going back up to the top one and this is going to be what I always call the nose. I'm going to feed this through. Sometimes I've taken a, a small pair of these scissors just to keep this pulled taut. Because sometimes it seems like it's hard to get it to pull through all those holes. Now on the lower one, I need to find, again, what I call the nose. I think I got that on the first try. No, <laughs> it's the wrong one. There, I got it. Now I'm going to the left side opening. I will admit sometimes, oh, I had it and drop it. Sometimes this uh, rope will get frayed and I have to put a little super glue on it. And we got it through. But this time I did not have to do that. Okay, now you can see I have all of them through. And I'm not saying this is the proper way to do this, but I go right at the top of the dead eye to where the the triangle of that those two ropes come together and I'm going to pull the rope back through there then I loop around the back Come around all the way, loop through that rope, make kind of a square knot, and then I pull tight, tight, tight using the tweezers to give me some leverage, and that's it. I'll put another drop of CA glue where this came out. Let that dry and then I will snap that off. But for your viewing pleasure, I'll go ahead and do it now and take my chances that it doesn't slip through. And that's how I've been doing the dead eyes. So that's it for part 28. I'm going to estimate that I will have this project fully completed by part 30 
or at the most part 31. So I hope you'll stay tuned for those two segments and stay with me. And uh, when I come to the last or second to the last, I'm not sure which, I'll introduce the next ship that I'm going to build. You know, I have a motto that I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. Model shipbuilding is a hobby that I'm in the middle of developing. I didn't start it until I was older. I've always had a fascination with them whenever I saw them as a kid growing up. And I have sailed a little bit when I was younger. I had a, uh, it was called a Sunflower. It was probably the smallest sailboat ever made and probably the cheapest also. But I have great memories from those sailing days and maybe that's the, the, the key that opened the door to me being fascinated with sailing ships. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.